Good morning, everyone. It's uh, good to see everyone here today on Wednesday, uh, the last Wednesday of the semester for us. Um, of course, not including finals. Uh, the uh, exciting uh, news today, I don't know if you've heard, many of you are just waking up, um, but there's been another um, uh, batch of results released from the Pfizer vaccine. Um, this is the, uh, they've reached the end point where they can submit data to the FDA for approval. Uh, the vaccine has um, proven to be 95% effective as of uh, at this stage of the trial. And there were, um, what, there was one important uh, additional piece of information, which was that it was effective across a broad age, age range. And that means that it will be effective in the most vulnerable population, um, the elderly, uh, which has been uh, historically difficult to get strong immune responses in with vaccines. And so this uh, mRNA vaccine that they're using in this strategy seems to be um, able to in, produce a pretty robust protective response in that age group. And so that's uh, really important. Uh, the uh, vaccine is still going to take a long time to administer, um, to produce and manufacture, um, administer. They also need additional safety data um, to make sure that it uh, has some long-term safety. Uh, but uh, it is very, very exciting news. Uh, as an immunologist, uh, I'll just uh, say that I'm pretty, pretty proud of uh, what we've been able to accomplish uh, so far. Also in immunology news uh, today, there was a study done of people who got coronavirus infections, SARS-CoV-2 infections, relatively early in the um, pandemic here in the US. Uh, and the, they've studied the long-term um, production of immune cells and antibodies in these patients. So many of you have heard me uh, express concerns about uh, how long protective immunity might last and whether or not you can get reinfected. And there have been some very rare, um, very, very rare examples of people that seem to have been able to get reinfected after a mild or perhaps even asymptomatic exposure initially. Um, these, uh, this group of patients was shown to have pretty strong um, immune responses, even six to eight months later after their infection, and they included people that had relatively mild infections. So there seems to be uh, good evidence now that uh, protection, at least from being uh, exposed to uh, the, the infection itself, COVID-19, will give you long-lasting protection, um, probably years, uh, definitely um, months, many months of protection. So uh, this is also really good news for the vaccine because one of the concerns would be if this vaccine needed to be readministered um, multiple times a year, it would make things much more difficult and compliance much uh, lower. But uh, it looks like a single immunization, at least with a vaccine that can produce the same levels of response that being infected with the virus produces could give you very long lasting um, immunity. And so that's kind of two separate studies uh, that have been uh, released just uh, in the past 24 hours. Um, they still have a lot of work to do, but it's very promising news. And I think that that leads us to uh, just a brief reminder about how important it's going to be to be vigilant over the next few months, uh, especially heading into Thanksgiving and then the winter holidays. I want to remind everyone that this year is going to stink. It's going to be, um, you're going to have to adapt to the current environment. And that is here in the US, very widespread community spread of this disease. And it means staying isolated within your family unit. 
as you're heading home, your family unit's going to change from the group of people that you were interacting with, your roommate, uh, for example, here at Bucknell, to your family that you're living with. But you need to carefully quarantine as you make that transition and then maintain that family unit, even though Zoom's giving, as they're calling it, is not going to be um, as, uh, as fun and it's not what any of us want. It's a sacrifice that we all need to consider making in order to get through the holidays and then get to the point where we can be vaccinated and next year will be um, completely different. So this uh, promising news is just a reminder not to let your guard down now because we can get through this, we really can. Um, we just need to um, uh, listen to the scientists, listen to what they're saying right now. And I just wanna give a shout out to my friends in uh, Vermont. I went to University of Vermont. Uh, I have a soft spot in my heart for um, all things Vermont. Uh, and uh, Vermont has been doing an outstanding job of maintaining uh, control of the infection. They're having uh, a small surge uh, now as well. But I often, um, as I'm looking around and seeing what different um, government officials are recommending, I often ask myself, what would Vermont do? And uh, they are entering a stage of, of um, locking things down a little bit more, you know, still not a complete shutdown, but uh, they are taking the measures necessary to control things. And I think we all should be looking to them to see what they're recommending um, and trying to implement that ourselves. For example, they're recommending not having multifamily gatherings over the holidays. Um, and that's going to be difficult, but it's something that we can all do to help protect each other and help protect the people that we love. 